The CD4081 is a quad AND gate with this truth table. Here's the symbol. If I've got A and B coming in and they're both low or false, then it's a zero on the out, low and false as well. If I've got a zero one, it's a zero. A one zero is a zero. Only a one one coming in gives a one out. I think the first thing to do is to try and figure out if this is working or not. What I'll do is probably tie two together. Maybe you have five volts coming in. And if we've got a one, we should get a five volt one on the outside. That's the plan. Let's see if this thing works. To test the chip, I've just got pins one and two tied together and a couple of pull down resistors here to ground. And then on output, I've just got a white LED currently unlit. And I've got some input as well coming to those two tied pins from five volts via a button with also a pull down resistor. So theoretically, when I push the button, yeah, so both of those inputs are one or high, and therefore the output is high as well. That's how the AND gate works. Nice. Probably what I'd like to do now is maybe use it as a level shifter. So what I'm interested in doing is, if this were a 3.3 volt input, would we get a five volt output from here? And then we can see if we can level shift from low to high, between those two and I've got a project in mind but let's just try it first and see if uh, it's going to work as a level shifter. The AMS 1117 3.3 volt version very simple uh, SOT 323 package that can convert in this case 5 volts to 3.3 volts. So let's just see if that's working um, we'll put this on the ground Oh, better turn it on first, might help. So five volts coming in, let's just see if that's the case. Yep, 5.10, and coming off that AMS 1117 3.3 3 is 3.3, pretty good. So will this be able to shift from low to high? Uh, what we might do is be a little bit ambidextrous. We'll just connect up to the output. That's pin number three and press. No, still at 3.3 volts. Uh, so that's not good. So that's not shifting from 3.3 volts to five volts, even though the CD4081 has got a five volt input it's not got a 5 volt output in this case it's just taking whatever's coming from the input in this case 3.3 volts and spitting it out so that probably means that that's a little bit yeah that's a little less bright than what it was before it's 24 hours later and i've done a little bit of reading up about the cd4081 and all of its cousins cmos chips complementary metal oxide semiconductor chips. And in order to activate them, you need 3.5 volts. So there's sort of like a minimum requirement for the input voltage high, VIH, I think it's in a lot of um, data sheets. So with 3.3 coming in, it's not enough to activate this. And there are more problems as well. I had a look at the um, the matchup between what you've got coming in and what you want coming out and there can be gaps and it's quite well known there's so many diagrams and uh, so many websites which point out this problem but there's also another family of chips the TTL chips which is transistor transistor logic they predate the CMOS chips and Apart from all the differences between them, things like, you know, how much power they use and how fast they can switch and all that sort of stuff. In this case, the main advantage for a TTL chip is that the amount of voltage required for it to register high 
is lower. It's 2.7 volts, not 3.5 volts for this CMOS chip. So our options are, and I do have some 74, uh, well, they're called 74 series chips, I guess, or 74,000, I'm not really sure, 7,400 chips probably. But the ones that I've got, uh, I've got an OR gate, and uh, we could certainly use that. That's a, um, a 74 LS, I've got 32. Oh, yeah, that's something which I should talk about too. The TTLs have subfamilies. There's a 74HC subfamily and a 74LS uh, subfamily. And things like, for instance, the, uh, the amount of power that they use, the threshold voltage and so forth and so on. But what I've actually got in the buckets, because, I mean, it's probably fair to say I've standardized on the CMOS chips, so what I've got in the buckets, I do have a 74LS32 OR gate, which I could use, and I've got a 74LS00, which is a NAND gate, which would also work, but, and I hate to say it, I've got a 74HC14 hex inverter. Oh my God, how many more hex inverter videos can I do? But what it will allow me to do uh, is I could, for instance, have my 3.3 volts coming in and the inverter, and I'll need two of them with five volts coming in and then down to ground, it will mean that this chip should pump out a five volt signal on the outside, effectively a level shift between the 3.3 volt and the five volt. So even this, though this video started out being about the CD4081, it's going to end up being about the 74HC14 hex inverter. Oh no, not another hex inverter. Let's wire it up and see if it's going to work for us. What a journey we've had. See you later, CD4081, the AND gate, and hello to an SN74HC14N hex inverter, again with a hex inverter. And what I've got is hopefully a 3.3 volt signal coming in from the uh, AMS1117. And when I press this button, it will come into pin number one, it'll be inverted coming out of pin number two, back into pin number three and inverted again to give us a, uh, a signal here. Let's, before we measure any voltages, let's just see if it's going to work. Uh, well, it won't work if it's not turned on. Let's try again. It's not working anyway. Well, there we go. Well, that was exciting. Yep, so it does work, but the question I'm interested in is to what voltage have we got? So let's just trace it through. Coming out of our converter is 3.24-ish volts, which is about right. And then if I don't press the button, that should be zero here at pin number one, which it is. Press the button and now 3.2-ish volts here goes through, that's nice. But the thing I'm really interested in is what is coming out of that chip? Have we done a level shift to five volts? So if I press that button again, yeah, look at that, 4. 9-ish volts, not too bad. So we do have uh, a level shift, and along the way, uh, I've certainly learnt a lot about the uh, CMOS chips and the TTL chips and their, their uses and their limitations, and some of the constraints that uh, are on them when you're looking to do something like level shifting. The whole point of this uh, was to come up with something that will allow me to go between the 3.3 volts of an ESP8266 and these little chips in here, which are 5 volt logic. Uh, so it's, I guess it's going to be part two of the video is, uh, is seeing if I can do that. I may not end up using this chip here, but I'll use something similar to do the level shifting of the data line from the 3.3 output of the ESP8266 and the 5 volt input of this one. I'm going to call that the circuit working for this week. Quite a journey. See you next time.